está en mi mano está en mi cara What's up, gang? You know this is Monster Kid Radio, episode number 76. I'm here at the Hollywood Theater at the Monster Kid Radio Crash event. You know, we opened the show with the song El Santo, the Silver Mask Avenger. It's by the Nick Adams. It's on their album in the 25th century. You can find out more about them at thenickadams.com or just follow the link. In the show notes over at monsterkidradio.net, I'm your host, Derek M. Cook, and I'm excited because we are about to watch the movie Santo vs. the Martian Invasion, and I'm going to try it. I'm going to try the Spanish title. You ready? Santo vs. Uh, you know what? I'm going to start over. Santo El Mascarado de Plato vs. La Invasión de los Marcianos. You know, we're just going to stick with Santo vs. the Martian Invasion. I'm excited about this one. I've not seen this one. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But first, I want to tell you that over at our Monster Kid Radio website, you can find our contact information. Our phone number is 503-479-5MKR. That's 503-479-5657. Or you can email us at monsterkidradio at gmail.com. Everything you need to know about Monster Kid Radio, you can find at our website. Okay, let's get back to the business of luchador film, luche libre film. So since the last Santo film, I've watched a couple of other films. I've watched... Okay, uh, Santo versus Las Lobas, as well as Los Campeones of Justice. You know what? It's Champions of Justice. Champions of Justice with the Blue Demon and Mila Mascaris. No Santo on that one. The other one is just Santo fighting werewolves. I mean, the Silver Mass Avenger fighting werewolves. He can't beat that. It was awesome. So here at The Crash, I am not alone. We've got Friendly Face, returning guest to Monster Kid Radio. Ray, what's up, brother man? I'm here. I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> How's, how's your life been different since you saw the last Santo film? You know, I've actually been jonesing for this next movie because that first movie was just so entertaining that I'm hoping this ups its game. Now, it's an earlier film, and it's only one wrestler. Well, I mean, there's other wrestlers, but only one lead wrestler hero. Well, we'll see how it goes. It's more Santo. I mean, the last one wasn't very much Santo. Santo yeah, showed up at the Santo end. Santo showed up at the end and said, hello, uh, I'm going to kick this guy's butt and then go from there. And I've got the fire gun, so we're good. Yeah, exactly. The fire gun still is awesome. I don't think we have very many fire guns in this one. I think this one's just straight up wrestling, but uh, so doing some check-in. Some of the uh, Martians are played by other wrestlers, including one named El Nazi. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Well, uh, hopefully it's a little better than the, what was it, Satan from this <laughs> other one. That was a little bit underrepresented, I must say. You know, I'm drawing a blank. I can't remember which wrestler played Satan in the last film, but he turned up in that Champions of Justice I was just talking oh, about okay. as his actual wrestler persona. And he's a big dude. He was really tall in the movie. I was like, Jesus, I can just imagine how tall he was other than being up on that platform. Now, have you watched any other luchador films since then? I haven't. This is going to be my second one. I, I really recommend Champions of Justice. It's available on Netflix. You can rent it out. I don't think it's available for streaming, but it's it's the mass Mexican wrestlers as a superhero team. Yeah, I might even check and see if they have it on Amazon Prime since I have it there. So You know, it might be, but I mean, Blue Demon, Mil Mascaris, a guy do- called uh, Dr. Killer, and a bunch of others, nice. they're awesome. I can't wait, man. <laughs> that sounds good. Now, hopefully, we're going to see some other people here. Uh, Tom Doffel, who is the man responsible for uh, hooking Monster Kid Radio up with a new computer system a while back, uh, is here. And I think Chris McMillan might show up. Hopefully, we'll run into him as well. I'm going to turn off the microphone for now. Let's see if anything else you want to say. No, I think we're ready to roll. Awesome. We'll uh, check back in here in a little bit. Movie's not started yet, but Tom's here. Tom, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> this is the first one of these types of movies you've seen, right? Uh, it is. You gave me the uh, the Blue Demon, which I have yet to peruse. I you tried gotta to watch study it. Up. I tried to study up before we got here, but uh, because of the snow from Snowmageddon, uh, I didn't have much time. I was working, but uh, I'm really excited to see this. I think the best way to see one of these movies for the very first time is at a movie theater. A group of like-minded individuals get ready to cheer and laugh and clap and all that. Yeah, there's a lot of people here that uh, I know. We've got you, Ray, my buddy Joel came with his uh, his lady Jen. And uh, we're going to have a good time. It's going to be awesome, man. Um, are you going to stick around for both, the movie and the double in the documentary? Yeah, I plan to stick around for both. I don't have anywhere to be. 
This is going to be awesome. Now, you actually own a Lucha Libre mask, a Luchador mask. Yes, an authentic Luchador mask, Lucha Libre from Mexico. How would you get this mask? Uh, my buddy Joel, the aforementioned, uh, when he was down in Mexico, picked it up for me because he thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. and, and you wear it around the house when you're doing chores, doing dishes, whatever? Occasionally, especially when I'm doing the, uh, the dishes, I like to run and slide across the, the counter to the <laughs> sink. Uh, sometimes I, I like to stand on my head, uh, do, do crazy things. It's probably one of the reasons why I haven't bought a mask for myself yet, because I, I just would be overcome with the feeling, the spirit of Lucha Libre. <laughs> it, it definitely takes you. It gets to your soul. <laughs> All right, man. I might check in with you after the movie. I look forward to it. I will try to do this. They keep interrupting because they keep wanting pictures. Right, we got five more minutes with the Lucha Lotus. If you'd like your picture taken, please walk up. <laughs> Yeah, I got my picture taken, and now I've got Chris McMillan. How you doing, brother? Hey, pretty good. How are you doing? Good, man. This is the man from the shadow over Portland. He's been on the show before, and uh, he was here last time for the last Santa movie. How has your life been changed since you saw the last film? It it was it's. Hang on a sec. Up oh, there, getting more photos. Um, oh, it's just changed immensely. <laughs> I, I, it, the world is much brighter now that I know there are movies out there where. Masked wrestlers can run around and take out mummies, and now Martians. That's right, man. That's right. Now, have you watched any movies, uh, Luchador movies, since then? I have (laughs) barely watched a movie since then. I've just been real busy, you know, working all that, just the day job thing. Oh, the wrestling church is back. In April, there's going to be a party. You hear that? Volleyball is opening on March 14th. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, what better way to spend Easter Sunday than in wrestling church? That's right, man. You know what? I think we might just have to wait until after the movie to chat. Yeah, I think so. All right. <laughs> there's a party in April for Lucidarte, as well as a party for the wrestlers. Monster Radio, Wrestling Church, thank you for helping us out tonight. And since Skokie 2014 is funded in part by the Multnomah County Cultural Coalition Grants and the Order of Cultural Trust. Thank you very much. Here we go, Santo versus Los Marcianos. Hey gang, back here in the studio here at Monster Kid Radio. What happened next was the movie itself. We sat down, we laughed, we cheered, we had a great time watching Santo take on all foes, whether they were Martians or wrestlers controlled by Martians. It was a lot of fun. And you know, we're going to talk a little bit with Ray and Chris and Rick about their overall thoughts about the movie. I'd like to suggest that this movie actually has pretty much everything that goes into one of these awesome Lucha Libre monster type movies. You've got the masked wrestler as a hero. You've got the professor sidekick. And of course you've got the villains that are also played by other wrestlers. No, this wasn't as full color fun campy as the first film that we saw where they fought the mummies with blue demon and Milmas Harris, but there's still something going on here, a magic, a charm. You don't need that full-color camp to enjoy this movie. Sure, there's a little bit of camp here, but there's still something really special going on here. I got really excited about the parallels I saw between this movie and a particular Ed Wood film, and I do bring it up more than once, once I start talking to Ray and Chris and Rick. Unfortunately, Tom had to leave, so I didn't get a chance to talk to him about his initial impressions of the film. However, I have talked to him since, and Tom, I know you're listening. 
March, it's on the final film in the Cinescopio series. We'll see you there. But for now, why don't we go ahead and get back to the Hollywood Theater for Monster Kid Radio Crashes, Santo vs. the Martian Invasion, right after this. It was raining in Tinseltown. A hard rain that washed the trash into the gutters. And some of that trash talks. Sings like a canary if you lay down enough cabbage. Or shove a Roscoe in his gob. Benny the Goose was a small-time grifter, fresh out of the caboose after doing a three-spot for bracing the wrong mark. I slapped a sawbuck in his mitts and made sure he saw I was healed before I asked him, Where is it? Benny wasn't a sap, and my reputation as Big Charlie's button man gave me a whole lot of pull on this side of town. He spilled like a round-bottomed jug. It took some legwork and a few rounds of hot lead, but eventually I glommed what I was looking for. A letter that every high pillow in L.A. had his torpedoes out looking for. I could foist it for some serious berries. But before I did, I figured I should read it. For adventure from a bygone era, the letter read, tune in to Protecting Project Pulp, a weekly podcast of classic pulp tales guaranteed to get your pulse pounding. You can tune into the thrills of Protecting Project Pulp. Visit their website at www.protectingprojectpulp.com for more information. Protecting Project Pulp, where adventure truly begins. Okay, I gotta ask you, Ray. What you think? You know, I must say, now I know where uh, the idea for the Oscar statues came from. <laughs> the aliens were Oscar statue personified. Uh-huh. But, yeah, other than that, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I, I gotta, like the other one better. I like the other one better because it's got more of a... Uh, well, it's got male mascaras. This one felt very planned nine from outer space, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Very much so. I wasn't expecting that. I loved it. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it wasn't bad. I, I like the, uh, the flying saucer. Like one big hamburger, but yeah, <laughs> it, it was decent. All right, well, I'm gonna go check in with Chris, see what he thought. All right, what you think, man? Uh, it was pretty fun. Not not quite as much fun as the last one, but you know, it still worked. You know, it's a different vibe. I, I Ray was saying the same thing. The other one was a little bit more fun. Yeah, it really was. This one seemed a little more serious, more into the wrestling because. They had matches in the ring, outside the ring, and all that. And I don't know. I, I missed the mummies. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just missed the mummies. Uh, I was asking Ray, did you get a Plan 9 from Outer Space 5 in this? Oh, yeah. Big time. And there were a few lines where it's like, really? Did someone see this a long time ago and pick up on it? I want to check the dates. I want to check to see what came first. I don't know off the top of my head, so... Yeah, but, you know, I mean, the whole idea where they're saying resistance is futile, I'm like, someone from oh. Star Trek saw this. That's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. It was like, really? That's the strangest subtitle I ever saw. But, you know, <laughs> hey, who knows? Maybe they did. I love that the Martians are like, we, our appearance intimidates them. Let's change. And then they name themselves after gods. Yes, and they come out in really short togas. <laughs> <laughs> not, not not inconspicuous at all. No, 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 no. The, yeah, they blend right in perfectly. Yeah, blend. Oh, yes. <laughs> I still had fun with it, though. I think the music was more traditional 60s sci-fi. Yeah, it really was. I mean, you, you really got a sci-fi vibe off of it. Um, the spaceship effects, yeah, they were kind of campy. But, <laughs> you know, it worked for the uh-huh. time. Um you know, let's, I think they could have used a couple more luchadors. You know, I really could. I was kind of, I was excited about this one, but it, I knew it was black and white, and I guess I felt like the luchador thing kind of demands full color, just that cheesy kind of color. But I thought it, I thought it still kind of worked. Oh, I did too. I mean, it's it's a fun movie. I mean, it's not as you know, like I said, I just didn't have as much fun. Maybe it was the first time I'd ever seen one of these, so it was that joy of discovery. Maybe this one just, you know needed a few more luchadors like i said but it was still a lot it was really enjoyable well the next one the last one in the series uh from what i understand if it's the same one i'm thinking it does have blue demon in it so we should have more oh well that'll be fun and what type of, do you i mean the monsters i'm hoping they're they're playing off the classic universal oh, yeah. match oh yeah oh, if it's the one that i'm thinking dracula frankenstein they're all there oh gr- even the creature no no, oh, no creature oh damn <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. We've not heard him on this show outside of a voicemail he left me a while back. Rick Myers. How's it going, man? It's going great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so you are from the Recovering Uber Geek blog. Yes, that is correct. And we'll make sure there's a link in the show notes so people can go check that out. It's always a good read when you post something. What did you think of the movie? Well, with my experience previously with uh, Lucha Libre through uh, WCW and ECW and somewhat WWE, um, I knew kind of what to expect with the style of wrestling as opposed to the way it is now with Lucha Libre. Yeah, yeah it, it's changed a bit. This was a lot more technical, what they showed. Mm-hmm. But it, it still was a the strange amalgamation of B-movie plus uh, Lucha Libre. And uh, I think this is, was a slightly older film than the previous one they showed last time. Yeah, it's a few years older. And I mentioned to Ray and I mentioned to Chris, I'm going to ask you, did you get a Plan 9 from Outer Space Vibe? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it wasn't just me. It wasn't just me. Okay, good. Well, that and Forbidden Planet kind of, sort of. Really? I, I guess, huh. I can see that. No, not as good special effects. I mean, well, forbidden, well, you know. Well, the headgear also reminded me of a bad skip from Living in Living Color. but <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah, because they had that third eye and it was really no, just a big hat. No, and... no the, the, the shape reminded me of the old oh. Butman's routine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that makes, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. So, so you're, you're a wrestling fan. You've got some wrestling in your background. The technical wrestling of this, it hold up. It pretty much holds up, but the thing is, is because they weren't as tight with it being a live show, it, you could see some of the, um, how I say, stayed yeah. uh, setups for it, as opposed to when you go to a actual live show, it seems more organic yeah. and not as stiff. I mean, I, I've actually been six feet from the ring and seen... A, a, a luchador Rey Mysterio Jr. wrestle and it's a lot more organic and, and fluid as opposed to what we saw in the film. Well, they're a lot more high-flying now, too, or is this this is a lot more uh, groundwork, you know, submission holds, and I mean, there's a few things here and there, but it's a different style and I still liked it. Well, I mean, even with the... Uh, I've I'm a big fan of the old school wrestlers, and I've seen some mm-hmm. some footage of people like Larry Zbysko and the Briscoe Brothers and and uh, superstar Billy Graham, and even compared to their matches, which are roughly the same period, this seemed, like I said, a little bit too staged. Okay. And, and so it loses some of the organic feel that you get when you go to and see a a show where they're a little bit more doing it on the fly at the time. That does make sense. And I mean, this is film, so, you know, they have to hit certain beats and certain points, you know. Um, the uh, empty arena match was a little little tough, and some of the, the the woods wrestling. But, I mean, I still liked the movie, and I still like Santa. Now, have you watched a lot of Santa films? Um, I don't remember, but see, I grew up in Southern California, so I could have seen them, just not remembered them. The other thing was, is the empty arena match reminded me of an old uh, match that included Jerry the King Lawler, where he was forced to wrestle one of his nemeses in an empty arena. <laughs> I mean, it is a thing. I mean, I, I've seen it on TNA Impact. I know they did it in WCW. So it is a thing. I mean, it's not like they made it up. It's the tradition. Yeah, it is a tradition, and even though there are slight, you know, like they said last time, I listened to your show and heard the uh, panel, and they talked about the difference in traditions, but there's also a lot of carryover of traditions between uh, American professional wrestling and, and Mexican lucha libre. In fact, in the 90s is when we saw a huge amount of the Mexican Lucha Libre luchadors to the United States and a large amount of the Japanese wrestlers who also yeah. are part of that whole masked mm-hmm. tradition. So you've got this period of time during the mid-late 90s with ECW and WCW mm-hmm. and WWE to a point yeah, and they tried, but they really didn't put their whole heart into it like the other two promotions did. Well, Vince McMahon likes the big guys. He's not a little guy. He likes the big dudes. He likes the Kevin Nashes, you know. 
unless he can't avoid them like Rey Mysterio right. Jr. Right. You know, unless they're too popular for him to ignore. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> You gonna stick around for the documentary? That's probably the main reason I came here. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see it. All right, now we are out of the theater. Now the show is over. Oh man, Ray, I'm. This was a blast. Yeah, that was that was awesome. The the documentary was amazing. <laughs> I like I had mentioned earlier before before watching it, I didn't realize that uh, Lucha Libre started in the Americas. Yeah, which was kind of a shock. But yeah, I was I was marveling at the the animosity between the the Mexican wrestlers, same as it goes with the uh, with World <laughs> Wrestling Federation back before it became the WWE. But you're referring to uh, Blue Demon Junior and El Santo yeah. Junior. Yeah, no love lost between those guys. They basically call each other, you know, bad words. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I noticed that uh, El Santo Jr. was not in the documentary. Yeah, I noticed that. And the one thing I found fascinating is they talked about, because I know one thing from the WWF back in the day and probably continues with the WWE now, the definitive, the difference between Mexican wrestling and American wrestling is in Mexican wrestling, once you're bad, you're bad. Yeah. If you're bad, you're in the bad corner. If you're a good guy, you're in the good guy corner. There's no cross genre. So it was, it was really interesting the way they, they brought that about. So, yeah. All right, so you saw the shot that I keep talking about when Mascara's changing the mask. Yes, that was <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, that's from that Champions of Justice movie, man. I, you got to see that movie. I watch it, yeah, because that's... I was like, is that the guy? Yeah, that's the guy that Derek was talking about. Yep, yep. Now, on that one, it's it's an evil scientist. He's got a bunch of little minis. And uh, they go after this this team of superhero uh, luchadors that drive around on motorcycles and just save the world. It's awesome. That, that yeah, that, I'm gonna have to watch that. One. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> it's, it's like a, a Mexican masked Avengers team. Nice. It's great, <laughs> nice. And they really put they one thing they put their heart and soul into this stuff. I mean, it's not it's not a fly by night situation. Hey, here's Chris. What, what you think of the documentary, man? I liked it. Um, I mean, it, it, I wish it had been longer and gotten a little more in depth. You know, yeah. it, it just it just seemed to gloss over a whole lot of stuff I didn't even realize was out there. Um, Shut over Portland rules. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got a fan. Oh boy, do I! Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it, it it just glossed over the whole bit about the uh, minis and the <laughs> exotics, and it's yeah, I know that was a bad. Well, no, we uh, we were actually talking about the minis. Uh, they're in that Champions of Justice movie that I was talking about. Oh, really? Which was also the same movie that had that shot of Mascaris doing the mask change out. Oh, the the real. Oh man, that was awesome. Yeah. Good lord, I yeah, saw that. Chris, that they glossed over the the minis and the exotics. They just kind of went, here's this, and let's move on. Yeah, it just didn't seem right. I mean, there, that I'm like, really? They had... I wanted to hear more about it because it just seems so out of place. You, you wouldn't see it in American wrestling. No, no, no. Is, you know, that's, that's a taboo they will not touch. Even no, it's not at all. It felt like it was a uh, like a special feature for a DVD versus a full length. You know, a, a full length documentary would have given us so much more. I think. Yeah. Well, and like I was telling Ray, it's not like El Santo Jr. showed up for this thing, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, he, he was noticeably absent there. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and the other problem I had was, I don't know, the subtitles just were, were really not... It was really grainy. You could yeah. it was taken from like a, a DVD copy or something along those lines. Well, I know they were playing it on a DVD, and I didn't know if blowing it up was causing it, but it was really hard to follow some of the... Um, Spanish-speaking um, commentators, because yeah. it was like, what, huh? You know, but um, still, great documentary. Well, you know, it, I, I I look forward to seeing a feature version of something like that. I hope there's like a website out there that supports this documentary that lists the different people that were in it, because I want to read every one of their books that talk about Lucha Libre stuff. There is a guy that they had on screen. Uh, his name's Keith J. Rainville. Uh, if you're a friend with me on Facebook, you can find him that way. But he be, he runs the website from, 
from Parts Unknown, uh, which is about Mexican wrestlers, that sort of thing. He put out a, a zombie, Mexican, Mexican zombie versus mummies book a while back. Really enjoy his work. I'm going to put a link in the show notes to From Parts Unknown. If you're interested in Mexican wrestler movies, go there and check it out. I highly recommend it to both of you. Oh, excellent. I'll take a look for it. Yeah, definitely. Good stuff. So we saw Dracula, and he mentioned that they fight monsters. I really hope the movie they're showing next is the one that I'm thinking it is. Because if it is, it's Blue Demon, it's Santo, it's Dracula. Oh. You can't get any better than that. No, especially if they do the old, you know, like I said, the universal stuff. If they bring those monsters in their own version of it, that's going to be so awesome. They can't do the creature because it's not public domain. But there is a Mexican comedy movie that's kind of like a Mexican riff on the Abbott and Costello, Jerry and Dean kind of thing. And there is a very low rent gill man in that thing. <laughs> it's not a luchador movie, but uh, if it's the one I'm thinking. Oh, oh, the documentary. I was going to ask you guys, did Patton Oswalt look drunk? Well, he was sitting there with a martini in front of him. I'm yeah, not sure if yeah, it was thanks. multiple martinis for multiple takes or yeah. if it was the same one. He looked um, like he'd been there a little while <laughs> before the... Well, you know, they haven't shown up yet to film this thing. I'll have another. Yeah, he um, he seemed a little out of it, a little discombobulated there, and, you know, the, the tussled hair and all that. But I, I take solace in knowing that... Uh, He's a fan. Oh, yeah. Severe fan. <laughs> so good. So good. What was, the, uh, what was the thing he mentioned? If, if a box of chiclets could... <laughs> could kick your ass. Could, yep. could evolve and <laughs> just kick your ass. I was like, that's great. No, I like the... Uh, it's, they're the angel on the top of the Christmas tree of ass kicking. Yes. You know, the minis. I like that line. That was great. <laughs> yeah, I also would have liked to have seen maybe some with the, like the female wrestlers that wear the mask because there, there is a, a small subgenre of that film wise anyway well they also showed a few of them in the ring but they just never really talked about them well that one there was one scene in there where they showed mm-hmm. some women wrestlers but they were taught they were still talking about original Lucha libre when they were yeah. when they showed that i was like okay are you going to go into this piece or that's it yeah which was really you know sad because i mean it's like wow they, they've got you know, women doing this too. I want to know more, and it's like, well, you know, we're just gonna go talk about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess we're just gonna have to go watch those movies on our own, guys. <laughs> oh no, that's gonna be such a chore. Rubber. Oh. <laughs> I know this is the worst kind of homework ever. <laughs> I know I am incredibly lucky to live in a town that supports events like Cinescopio at the Hollywood Theater. This was a lot of fun. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're going to be in the Portland, Oregon area next month in March for the final installment of Cinescopio for Santo vs. the Monsters, you got to come out. It's such a fun time. It's a great time. Get your picture taken with some luchadors. Yeah, I got my picture taken again. Go check out the Flickr album at monsterkidradio.net to take a look at that. It's just so much fun. So, like I said, we lost Tom. He had to take off. And then we also lost track of Rick. He ended up talking to the guys who run the show while Chris and Ray and I talked about the movie itself outside the theater. But you know what? It was great to see Tom. It was great to see Rick. It was great to see Chris and Ray and everybody else at the Hollywood Theater. Now, speaking of the Hollywood Theater, you know what's coming up here in April? the H.P. Lovecraft Film Festival, and Cthulhu Con. Oh, yeah, it's happening. It's the Year of the Witch, which means we're going to have a very heavy Dreams in the Witch House vibe at the festival, which means they're going to be showing the movie Curse of the Crimson Altar. There's going to be some other movies as well, but Curse of the Crimson Altar is one of the ones that I am most looking forward to. Christopher Lee, Boris Karloff, some Lovecraft connections. You cannot go wrong. I'm talking to the festival directors about maybe introducing the film itself, get some Monster Kid Radio action going on, because I am actually going to be a guest at the Lovecraft Film Festival this year. I'm not going to be alone. We've also got Doug Bradley, the guy who played Pinhead in the Hellraiser films, Robert M. Price, S.T. Yoshi, couple of Lovecraft scholars, Sandy Peterson, the creator of the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game, Andrew Lehman, one of the guys behind the Call of Cthulhu and Whisper in Darkness films, Brandon Seifert, writer of the Witch Doctor comic book. He's also done some work for some Clive Barker properties and some Disney properties. Head over to hplfilmfestival.com and you can learn more about what's happening this year at the HP Lovecraft Film Festival and Cthulhu Con. I hope to see you there again 
as with any event that we do here with Monster Kid Radio, look me up. I'll have my recorder. Say hi. I might put you on the show. I'm not hard to miss. I'm typically wearing a Hawaiian shirt, and I've got the little recorder in my hand, and I'm the guy who looks like he's having the most fun in the room. Remember, we have a contest going on right now for you to win a copy of Argo Man, the Fantastic Superman, courtesy of our friends over at Dorado Films. I interviewed Roger Brown, the man who played Argo Man in the film, in the last episode of Monster Kid Radio. So go back, learn all there is to know about Argo Man and Roger Brown and his career, and then find out how you can win a copy of the DVD. The deadline's next week. So go back, listen to the last episode, get your entry in, we'll announce the winner next week on Monster Kid Radio. Speaking of next week on Monster Kid Radio... Got a couple of things going on, a couple of podcasts brewing. I'm excited for next week, no matter which direction we end up going. So you are just going to have to come back in a couple of days to find out just exactly what we're going to talk about. Again, you can find links to everything that we talked about here on Monster Kid Radio over on our website at monsterkidradio.net. And I think there's probably enough there to keep you busy until next week's episodes. Monster Kid Radio is a registered service mark of Monster Kid Radio, LLC. All original content of Monster Kid Radio by Monster Kid Radio LLC is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. Of course, that does not apply to the song El Santo, the Silver Masked Avenger. That belongs to the Nick Adams. It's on their album in the 25th century, and it appears on this episode of Monster Kid Radio with their permission. Talk to you next week. No está en mi mano, está en mi carro. He came out of nowhere, some say from Mexico, king of the rappers, that might have done. And if you push and die, I'll know the sun, so we'll give it, give it a try. The man behind the mask is a mystery to all his fight never ends, he never will fall. The sooner you take your life, will be taken, nothing can stop you. That man of Santo! Fathers and the beauty men, the friends of Santo, they fight me. The French and Mexico, Dracula and the Wolfman, and Frankenstein as well. They all failed good, sometimes they them to hell. I can understand the word of Spanish, but I know the terms of the friend of God. Get the people you hate, your life will be safe, cause your thing is tough. That man of Santo! Wrestling crow after a whipping pet. Hey! The winner's Santo to help the mighty Santo fight all the evil thugs. He looked to the children and tricked with big old jugs. Big old jugs? Wearing a silver mask and driving a cool car and fighting monsters? Could that be the life for me? I wish I could be just like El Santo! El Santo. Just like El Santo! El Santo. Just like El Santo!